In this video, we're going to learn how to write a C program which checks if a string is a palindrome using recursion. So a string is a palindrome if it's the same as its reverse. So for example, ABA is a palindrome. ABBA is also a palindrome. ABC BA is also a palindrome. Race car is also a palindrome because race car reversed is actually just race car again. But a string like word, for example, is not a palindrome because word reversed is D-R-O-W, which does not match the original string. Now, one way we can check if a string contains a palindrome is to check the corresponding characters on either side of the string to see if they match. So for example, in the case of the string race car, we would want to check if the first character matches the last character, and if the second character matches the second last character, and if the third character matches the third last character, and so on, until we reach the middle of the string. We could implement a recursive algorithm to solve the problem this way. So up here, we'll include the library stdbool.h. So we can use the type bool and the values true and false. We'll call the function check palindrome, and the function is going to return a bool. It's going to return true if the string the function is passed as an argument contains a palindrome and false otherwise. The function will accept the string as an argument, as well as two int values, a left index and a right index. And we're going to use these indexes to check and see if the string contains a palindrome. So we'll supply a definition of this function down here. And when we call this function, we're going to supply it with the string and the index of the first character in the string and the index of the last character in the string. So for example, if we had here, car star test is equal to race car. Each of the characters in this string is at an index. So for example, the first R here is at the index zero, then A is at the index one, then C is at the index two, and so on for the rest of the characters in the string. So then, when we call the check palindrome function, the left index would initially be set to zero, and the right index would initially be set to six. And then, we could check to see if the characters at these indexes are equal. If the characters are not equal, the string is not a palindrome, and then we could return false. If the characters are equal, then we would want to check the next pair of corresponding characters in the string. What we could do is call check palindrome. And when we do, we could increment the left index by one and decrement the right index by one. So R would then be here and L would be here. We could then check to see if these characters are equal. And again, if they're not, the string is not a palindrome and we could return false. If the characters are equal, then the string may be a palindrome, and we would have another recursive function call. Again, the right index would be decremented by one, and the left index would be incremented by one. We would then check to see if these characters are equal. And if they are, then the function would be called again. At this point, the left and right index would both be three. And by definition, the character at this index is going to be equal to itself. So if the left index is equal to the right index, then at that point, we have confirmed the string is a palindrome and we can just return true. Now, if the string contains an even number of characters, then the left index will become greater than the right index if the string contains a palindrome. So for example, if we had the palindrome ABBA, then we would have the indexes 0, 1, 2, and 3, and L would initially be here, and R would initially be here. Then we would increment L and decrement R. And then again, because B is equal to B, we would increment L and decrement R. And so R would be here and L would be here. So if during this process, the left index becomes greater than or equal to the right index, that tells us the string contains a palindrome. Let's actually implement this now. So down here, we'll have if 
left is greater than or equal to right, then we're going to return true because we know this means the string contains a palindrome else if the character at the left index is equal to the character at the right index, we're going to keep checking the rest of the characters in the string. So we're going to return the result of calling check palindrome with our string and the new left index of left plus one and the new right index of right minus one. And here's where we're doing the incrementing of the left index and the decrementing of the right index. Now, if the characters at these indexes are not equal, then the string is not a palindrome and we can just return false. So here for the else case, we'll have else return false. And that's actually it. Now, the only thing with this function is that we have to supply the initial left index and the initial right index it would be nicer if we could just apply the string as an argument to the function. We could create a wrapper function to help us with that. So up here, we'll create a wrapper function. We'll have a function is palindrome. And the function is going to return the bool whether or not the string is a palindrome. And this function is only going to accept the string as an argument. So here we'll have car star string. And this function is basically going to call check palindrome with the initial left and right indexes. Now the initial left index is always going to be zero, but the initial right index is going to be the last index in the string. That's going to be one less than the length of the string. In other words, one less than the number of characters in the string. There's a function called strlen in the string.h library, which actually returns the length of the string. So here we could include the string.h library to help us. And then down here, we'll define the is palindrome function. So we'll copy this and paste it here. And in the is palindrome function, we'll call the string length function strlen and we'll pass it our string. That's going to return the length of the string. We can store that into a variable called length. So here we'll have int length is equal to the return value of strlen when it's called the string. Then we can return the result of calling check palindrome when it's past the string and the initial left index of zero and the initial right index of length minus one. Now, if the length of a string is zero or one, then it's automatically considered to be a palindrome. So we could check for that here. We could have if length is equal to zero or length is equal to one, then we know the string is a palindrome. And in that case, we can just return true. So we can now test this function out. In main, we'll have here if is palindrome when it's called with our test string test returns true, then we'll put here the string in brackets with percent %s is a palindrome followed by a new line and we'll put the string here test. Otherwise, if the function returns false, then we'll put here printf percent %s to put the string in brackets is not a palindrome followed by a new line and we'll put the string test. So if we save this, compile and run the program, then here we get race car is a palindrome, which is correct. If we change this string to something that is not a palindrome, like for example, word, and then we save, compile and run the program, now we get word is not a palindrome. So the function is working correctly. And this is how we can check to see if a string contains a palindrome using recursion in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.